Hello everybody and welcome to the 6th episode of OpenGL engine slash game development log. In this video I will show you the changes that I made to the engine this past week. And I'd also like to apologize that I didn't make any videos last week. Because I really didn't get much done on my vacation. So with that out of the way let's get into the topic of this week's video particles. I already had a basic particle system that was updated on the GPU using the compute shader, which you can see on your screen updating 1 million animated particles. But this week I've been working on upgrading it a bit and also transferring the update functions over to the CPU to make sure older graphic cards shouldn't have any issues updating the particles. The next thing that I added to the system are some trigger particle emitters that will only emit a specified amount of particles one time. I also added an option of choosing different blend modes for particle rendering. The emitter on the left was using regular alpha blending and the one on the right was using additive alpha blending. CPU particle updating can also be useful for updating a small amount of particles and particle emitters that require specific particle locations. Also, the particles on the CPU can easily be sorted and then rendered from back to front, which is required for normal mix alpha blending to work properly. Ideally, we should sort all the particles in the scene according to the distance from the camera to make sure all of them are rendered correctly. But for now, I don't think it's worth the hassle. So I just sort the particle emitters according to their distance to the camera. The next thing that I've added are soft particles, which as you can see from the video remove the ugly contact points with the rest of the geometry. The next thing I've been working on is adding some properties to each individual material. As you can see from the video, the ragdoll is sliding very slowly on the rubber material due to its high friction. Also, because of the elastic property of the rubber, bouncing of the rigid body should be more pronounced. The next material is actually marble, which probably does have quite a bit of friction, but for demonstrating a very slippery material, I removed its friction altogether to make it resemble sort of an icy surface. And as you can see from the video, this kind of material doesn't really have any bounce to it. The next material is just grass, which has a little less friction than the rubber. The next thing that I've added to the engine is an emissive property that basically just lets me specify which parts of an object emit light. Another property that I've added to materials is the height map displacement scale that is used to specify how much the parallax effect displaces the surface. As you can see from the video, all of the properties can be set using a configuration file. And this brings us to the end of this video. If you like the video, like it. And if you would like to see more videos in the development log series, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.